Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Schultz. Today we have our final Armenian tale of the week. And this story is... Well, by the time it gets finished, it's an origin story. But it also has the longest setup for the smallest payout that I've ever seen. This is... Salmon and Rostam. Salmon was a strong and mighty man. He was as large as a hill, as powerful as a giant, and a terrible tyrant. He lived in one corner of the world, but his fame spread terror over all the earth. He had a horse of lightning, and his arms were as strong as iron. He assaulted men in their peaceful habitations and took tribute from them. None could refuse to pay him tribute, else he would slaughter and destroy the people. In another portion of the earth there was another strong brigand called Chal, who had a son named Rostam. This Rostam was a huge man, as large as a mountain and celebrated greatly for his extraordinary strength and bravery. It was only the land of this Chal which did not pay tribute to Salmon. One day, Chal mounted his horse and started, saying, Let me go and see what kind of a man Salmon is. After a long journey, he met a huge man mounted on a horse swift as lightning. The staff of his spear was as thick as a man's waist. Charles did not know that this was Salmon himself, but nevertheless he prepared his spear for battle. To his surprise, the horseman gave spur to his horse and passed by Chal without even looking at his face. Upon this, Chal was offended and threw his spear after the horseman. Salmon turned back, seized Chal, whom he bound under the belly of his horse, and galloped until he came to a tent pitched by a gurgling spring. He dismounted, nailed Charles' ear to the tent's beam, and lay down to sleep. Charles was almost mad with rage. He gnashed his teeth and muttered to himself, He did not speak a word to me. He did not tell me his name. I wish I might know who he is. Solomon soon waked and asked, Fellow, who are you? I am from Charles' country, answered Charles. He was so much afraid that he did not say that he was Charles himself. Ah! Oh, exclaimed Salmon, releasing Charles' ear. Why did you not tell me before? Go and bid Rostam, Charles' son, come hither that we may measure swords. There cannot be two men of equal strength. The world must know who is the stronger champion. I am Salmon. Shaul returned to his house and sighed deeply. Rostam, hearing him sighing, said, Here now, father, you are Charl, and I am Rostam, your son, and yet you sigh. Nay, you must tell me your grief. Charl told him of his meeting with Salmon, and the latter's challenge to Rostam. Rostam took with him his cousin, Vijan, and both disguised themselves, assuming the habit of pilgrims. Rostam kissed his white-hoofed horse on both eyes and said to his father, When I am in trouble, my horse will know it and will beat the ground with his feet. Then bind my arms upon his back and set him free. He will come and find me. Vijan, who accompanied Rostam on his journey, was far from being a common mortal. He had a wonderful voice. If he cried in the east, his voice would be heard in the west. After traveling for a long time, Rostam and Vijan came to a city and encamped upon a meadow outside the town. Rostam was sleeping when Vijan heard a terrible uproar in the city and went there to inquire the cause of the trouble. Some of the people were running like chased deer, some were tearing their hair, some beating their breasts, and all were weeping and wailing. Why, what is the matter? asked Vijan. Solomon has come, demanding seven years' tribute that is in arrears, the people answered. Soon they collected the amount, but the question now arose by whom should they send the tribute, 
because Solomon would take away the man by whom the tribute was sent and kill him. Give it to me. I will take it, said Vijan. Soon, Rostam heard in his sleep Vijan's shrill voice saying, Help! Rostam! Solomon is carrying me away! Rostam got up and learned from the people what had happened, and lo, his white-hoofed horse came running and stood before him. Immediately, Rostam jumped on the back of his horse which galloped away and soon reached Salman's tent. Salman, having nailed Vijan's ear to the tent beam, came out to meet Rostam. Then and there took place a duel the most terrible that has ever been recorded in the history of the world. Bows and arrows, spears and swords were cut into pieces. Finally, they came near one another, seized each other, and both were entangled in each other's hair. Up to the present time they have not yet conquered one another, but are still struggling. Now and then they pull and shake each other so violently that the earth quakes, and that is what men call an earthquake. And Vijan's voice is still heard deeply from afar. And that is the Armenian folktale of Salman and Rostam, the origin of the earthquake. And this reminds me so much of a Japanese tale that takes so long and has so much build-up. And then yada yada yadas over the most interesting part, the fight. Although, at least in this case, we learn that the fighting is what we call an earthquake. So, there is that. This is Dan Schulz for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We'll be back next week with three new tales. Don't forget that if you'd like to help other people find the podcast, we would love it if you left a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or really anywhere that you listen. As always... Thank you so much for listening.